ask you a question. A, uh, a close reading of the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto mm -hmm. in its introduction to the state of the economy delves into global factors that could also be contributing to the high cost of living. The rising cost of fuel, the Russia-Ukraine war, amongst other issues. How much of that is contributing to the, f the front page of the Daily Nation today, and, and, and my director can feel free to put it up, the politics of UNGA, and how much of local internal dynamics is contributing to that? And, and you look at that, because it's now become a political discussion. Is the cost of UNGA purely pegged on local factors, or are there f uh, international factors at play? Well, Higa Moora, the government of the day was able to control, and you have removed me from my trail of thoughts, but that question, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, was able to control the UNGA, uh, in 2017. It was very political. It was an intervention, direct intervention. And if you read that, our, our manifesto, these factors sometimes work well when they, 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 there, is, there is a fair you know, market equilibrium and where government you know, is able to provide public goods for everybody. But our market is not fair. It is a rigged market. It is somewhere where you go, you get a license to supply this and that to government. It is a failure on the part of the government of the day that the cost of food is very high. And if you want to, t if you want to actually believe, look, productivity has gone down, yet actually what you just need to do is to ensure that you increase the inputs. Because agriculture is not really capital intensive. It has got the greatest turnaround, pr pr producing 50% uh, of our GDP 25% directly and 25% indirectly. Why is the cost of Unga, I, you asked that question, why is it costing less in Uganda than in Kenya? Why is it costing less in Tanzania? If you go to the border of Namanga, see the amount of food that is coming into Kenya from those countries. Why are we not producing enough rice that we are spending 25 billion to imp uh, import ex excess rice and also uh, ex extra rice and also the, uh, if you look at the second uh, import of our economy is actually cooking oil after petroleum. You see? And who are the people doing this big business? Are they not the people who coalesce around the business round tables and, and, and lobby state house to actually ban anything called counterfeit so that people, uh, so to protect local industry, yet those are the majority of Kenyans in, in Yamakemba. They are the people who are, are trying to eke out a living and so therefore they don't have money in their pockets. So I think let us not lie to Kenyans. It is politics, it's political economy. You cannot separate uh, economy from politics. And that is why we are saying categorically mm -hmm. that the third liberation of Kenya mm -hmm. is economic liberation. And yeah. this government which has borrowed yes. seven trillion in the last nine years and particularly five trillion in the last five years mm -hmm. can actually not be when you have the chairman of Azimio, okay. when you have the presidential candidate of Azimio okay. to be interested in this country. Their role is, is, is reforms. Thank, let's and that's why Mother Karua was chosen, as Baba and, and Mother, they're telling us here, Senator to, to deal with the issue of the, of the, of the Constitution. Sen Senator Kasanga, yeah. you may ju jump in now. Yes, yeah, Senator <laughs> Mora is being very sensational. <laughs> you can hear his volume going up <laughs> because he's trying to, you know, be extremely sensational about these issues. Even, uh, like you said, Wahiga, which he didn't quite address, the beginning of the mani their own manifesto talks about a perfect storm, which is highlighting the issues that are global that are affecting our local markets. And it is a fact. It is even written there, they have said it. So he's being sensational by really saying it is the government, you know, of Raila. And the fact remains, does the Honorable Raila hold a public office that then they can say he's in government? They keep saying he's in government, but they've never told us which is this office that he holds that then he can control, you know, the price of Unga, for instance. Which is this office they keep insisting he holds? When is it that he sat for a cabinet meeting? Or for that matter, IBEC, which is the one that, you know, controls the funds that go down to the counties. When did Raila sit in such a <laughs> so that they can say he's in government? And you know what, uh, Wahiga? It is increasingly becoming clear to us as Kenyans what really happened in 2018. You know, the details surrounding the handshake, which we've all not been fully privy to. But slowly by slowly, the details are coming out. You know, there is a time when the president spoke about, you know, how he felt strongly the need to bring Kenyans together and therefore reached out to the right honorable Raila for a handshake. And this was at a time when Kenya had come to a complete standstill. You know, we like to forget sometimes the detail, maybe because we are caught in, the, in, in life. But the fact remains in 2017, 2018, this country had come to a standstill. We had a contested election. 
over half the citizens of this country were unhappy because we felt our election had been stolen. And that's a fact. And we went ahead and saw in a people's president. The people's president was gracious enough to accept a handshake for the sake of this country. We know in African countries, you would never have seen such a thing happening, where a person who controls over half the country's vote would have actually put aside his <coughs> own personal ambitions, the ambitions of the people considering, you know, at that time, the county assemblies had already started passing the people's president motion with a view to even bring the car that government down. He actually stood aside and said, no, the country is bigger and accepted a handshake request from the president. That detail has come out. We are seeing another detail coming out where the deputy president was not happy that a handshake happened, was not happy that the president wanted to bring to the table half of the country that was already so unhappy. It seems like the deputy president was not happy to the point where he wanted to slap the president during that contested election. I mean, <laughs> what is this? What are we being treated to as Kenyans? I think it is clear. Mwana doesn't agree with he, I It's don't. okay. Let me speak my part. He will have his chance to speak. But this, this, what we are seeing playing out here for us as Kenyans is clear enough. Let the Jubilee government, of which the deputy president was part of, they need to go home. We've given them the chance. We've given them the chance to lead Kenyans. They have shown us what they can do. Can they go and home when the president is the chair of Azimio? They can go home. The president may be the, the, president may be the chair of Azimio, but he's not on the ballot. He is not on the ballot. Is a, is a Prime Minister Putin. He's not, a, he's not on the ballot. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll get a chance to speak. Let me just say this. Eh? Already in 2013, we were treated to very sensational you know, a, unveiling of a Jubilee Manifesto. We still haven't forgotten the promises of the 20, 2013 Jubilee Manifesto. We've never forgotten it. And all the promises that were supposed to come and take us to a first world country. We've never forgotten that. All right? And what happened immediately after? State capture, budgeted corruption to unprecedented levels is what we were treated to during that from 2013 is what we were treated to as Kenyans. The cost of living had already gone up even by the time we went to the second 2017 election. The cost of living had already gone up significantly because of this corruption issue. <coughs> So Wahiga, what are we talking about as Kenyans? We need to open our eyes and see that there's nothing here even to debate. Really, we have only one solution. We have to give the right honorable a chance to lead this country. Because when you look at the history, and people don't want to talk about history. Every time the history is brought up, you're told, oh, that is history. You must look behind to move ahead. You must look at where Raila has brought us. Even as an opposition leader consistently has led this country in the right direction. Mm. These, you know, even the liberties we enjoy today, you know, multi-party politics that we fought for, you know, these liberations that we are enjoying now, uh, Senator Mauro is talking about a third liberation, the first two liberations, who was really, you know, who is it who brought that, those two <coughs> liberations? We need to give him a chance because he knows even how to treat the economy of this country to lead us forward. Bonokango, uh, even as uh, uh, Sylvia points a finger at the Kenya Kwanzaa and asks, <laughs> If it's about Jubilee going home, you know, the deputy president, you know, is, is a flag bearer on that end. But some ask, then for Raila Odinga, who, uh, you know, opposed Jubilee in 2013, 2017, the question of getting into a partnership with the leader of Jubilee to present Kenyans with a new future also begs questions on the same as well. How do you reconcile that? And for you in the Kanu party, which is within that political formation, as you point fingers at the Kenya Kwanzaa <laughs> political formation as well. Absolutely. Thank, thanks, Wege. First of all, I want to answer my good friend, Senator Mawada, um, <laughs> when he asked that, what is the stake of Kanu in this next term? <laughs> I want to assure uh, my good friend, uh, uh, Mudongo Aroiro, that uh, Kanu has got very high stakes because uh, in Kanu we believe in unity of this country and that's our mantra and we believe in inclusivity, we believe in sustainable development, we believe in zero tolerance to corruption. 
we are supporting Raila Amolo Odinga under umbrella of Azimio. And if you saw my chairman was in CIA and he reiterated that. And therefore, don't worry, we shall form the next government and Raila Odinga will also be your president. Number two, uh, people have asked uh, Mora that um, uh, President Uru Kenyatta is the president, is the party leader of Jubilee, and is supporting Raila Odinga, is endorsing him. They are forgetting that other than President Uru Kenyatta being the president and being Jubilee party leader, he's also a Kenyan who has political rights to choose a political party of his choice, to choose a kind of his choice, and to vote for whoever he wishes and he thinks that will make his life better as a Kenyan. And therefore, to that extent, President Uru Mwigai Kenyatta has a right to support whoever he wishes. He has supported, he has chosen this time to support Raila Odinga because he believes that the Azimio agenda is a bigger agenda for all Kenyans. Number two, uh, there's nothing like handshake government. My good friend, uh, Senator Ezekia and Tim, have also been saying all through that the problems that we have in this country have all been because of, uh, you know, handshake government. There has never been a handshake government. If you go to the records, you will see the ticket that was elected jointly, Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta and William Samoy Ruto. And Senator Kasanga has given a good example of the launch of their manifesto then, 2013 and 2017, the dramatic. Yesterday, I saw... Isaac Mwana uh, then was in ODM. So. Uh, no, no, no. He's in, he, I mean, he carries the cross today because he's with them. Okay. You know, uh, when, w w yesterday, the provost of uh, Olsen's Cathedral gave a very good sermon, and he asked the people of Kenya, where are the promises of the laptops? Where are the promises of the dams? Where are the promises, you know, of... Uh, all these things that we were asked, the jobs, they are not there. The same person that today is promising Kenyans what he's going to do about the same thing is the same person who was in a dramatic event telling Kenyans how this will be done in three months, in six months' time. I want to ask the people of Kenya. The only safety net that you have today is in Azimio Laumoja One Kenya because this is a team that has recollected themselves and have history of performance and have shown all through their lives that they value and fight for the people of Kenya. You know, when William Ruto unveiled their manifesto, I heard him speak yesterday and he said that uh, the president is unhappy because his manifesto is going to make things better on challenges or what the president did not do. He's forgetting and I'm reminding them that today, William Ruto is still the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. He still sits in cabinet. He still chairs some of these IBEC meetings. And to that extent, William Ruto cannot tell Kenyans that whatever he's promising is not the same challenges that Jubilee is undergoing today, of which he is part of. And therefore, he cannot stand on a podium and tell people what he has failed to do that he's going to do better in another five years. While in the nine years that Kenyans gave him, 10 years also, Kenyans gave them a chance, he failed. And lastly, Oigo, when they think that they are angry and they want to fight Kenyans, including the president, because they feel that they must get power by whatever means, we want to tell them that as Kenyans, we're even hungry. We don't have food, we don't have anything, we don't have money, we don't have jobs. We have a right to be angry, and they have a right to fix those issues. And therefore, we shall go with the faction of Azimio La Moja One Kenya that what, has what, demonstrated what do, what do you think was that the they impact can fix this of Executive Order Number 1 of 2018? Which says? which uh, seemingly transferred some of the deputy president's functions to Matiangi. Seemingly, but not. You see, <laughs> the deputy president mm -hmm. has always argued that Matiangi took his roles. If you read the Constitution of Kenya, the deputy president is the principal assistant to the president and can do any other job as allocated to him by the president. And therefore, he has a right to demand for some of these jobs that he is constitutionally bound to do. And that executive order just gave roles to C.S. Matiangi in his docket to execute. And it is not, it is not entirely take away the principal assistance role of the deputy president. And I mean, it is wrong to argue that all the time that the deputy president missed uh, COVID-19 meetings, 
because his role has been taken by Matiangi. It is wrong to argue that the deputy president meant launch of mega projects by President Uru Kenyatta because Matiangi took his job. Some of those events, Matiangi was not even there. I want to ask the Kenya Kwanzaa, because they have said they have a manifesto, and we have said we have an agenda that the, Kenya, the people of Kenya want. What do you want Let to ask them? Let us go for this campaign on a basis of ideas. OK. Maura. I think it's very and, interesting. And, 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 and even as you respond, you can also talk a little bit about whether you feel the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto has been taken out of context on the section that talks about state capture. Uh, because uh, it seems that some of the members of your team have over the weekend had to uh, a state that it's not President Uru Kenyatta we are targeting as he retires in, in, in this particular. So also please address that as you respond to what they've said. I think first and foremost it's very insensitive to come on national television and say that uh, uh, that uh, Deputy President uh, William Ruto, I don't know, wanted to do what to someone. That information is being uh, distorted uh, to suit a political narrative and, and, and it is very clear uh, because the context within which those sentiments may have been uh, spoken about was about the, the, the repeat general elections and going back to the people for a rerun. It has nothing to do with what uh, my dear sister Sylvia Kasanga tried to insinuate here. And secondly, there can never be an insensitive government than Peter Munya saying that people should, uh, uh, you know, stop the habit of uh, eating unga because maize was imported by colonizers. And we should therefore go back to sorghum and millet. It's basically a situation like that of Marie Antoinette, who told the, the mobs in Paris, France, that they should be eating cake instead of bread. <laughs> this is a kind of insensitive government uh, of a minister who has already been appointed before people win. And I want to talk with a lot of humility, uh, 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 Fred Okango. We are, you know, humbly asking for people to give uh, the deputy president, William Ruto, a chance to govern. We will not talk down on them like you, saying that you already have one government and that you're already in power. Indeed, uh, if then you can ask here on national television, uh, what role does Raila Odinga play in this government? He is the high representative for infrastructure development in Africa. And therefore, he sits uh, in state house. You don't need to sit in cabinet to make this. In any case, uh, we were told that cabinet was, had not met for two good years. And just because uh, people uh, feared that the people, others would go to court, that is why a, a, a rush cabinet meeting was done, <laughs> to even approve bills that had not been uh, properly sanctioned and programmed. I mean, we live in this country. And when we speak, we speak because of facts. Uh, the other thing that I also want to tell you without a doubt is the fact that um, there is no better way to, than to use uh, uh, legislation, to use numbers in parliament, to actually steal from the people by dint of policy. Because it is by stroke of a pen, Wahiga Maura, uh, that you are able now to steal when people are, 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 are discerning. And you know, to give a little bit of parliament credit, the recent uh, finance bill that was to increase uh, the food prices further was shot down by parliament. At least on that one, we got it right uh, at the National Assembly. But you can see how much cumulatively this has been done. The, the Kenya Kwanzaa, the plan, freedom is coming this coming on 9th of August, uh, is very well thought out. I can tell you we have never had a consultative process that has been so engaging uh, with the people. I have been part and parcel of it myself, even crafting and what have you. Even the initial 10-point agenda, we were there of the manifesto, and that was way, way, way back. Uh, we have gone to all of the 47 counties. We have spoken to interest groups just recently, the other week, and I must thank the standard because I can see a very good article on page two about people with disabilities. We had a session on people with disabilities with, with uh, Deputy President William Ruto. He sat there for four good hours listening. That has never happened with our so-called Azimio or Lakuzimia uh, people here. What has been happening is that they sit down in the back room and they write their own manifesto. And I have been part of them. Yes, you are, you are right uh, when you say that um, uh, uh, I was in ODM or Higa Mwaura, and even Fred Okango trying here to uh, insinuate that I should carry the, 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 the... I do not blame the first administration on anything. Uh, that, I mean, I do not take credit because I was not part of them. But believe you me, having joined uh, 
And I was persuaded by President Uhuru himself in person to join uh, uh, the Jubilee administration, uh, that it includes everybody. But soon after, we were kicked out. So I want to say without, without doubt um, here, uh, Wahiga Mora, that we are living with a, in, a, in, a, in a country full of hypocrisy. Those big four agendas could not be implemented because the moment you replace the big four agenda, how could the dams be built? How could the, uh, the stadium be, be built? When you actually, uh, the, the most consultative process was the BBI. We were taken into a charade where people are moving from Kitui to Mombasa to wherever, consuming over 10 billion shillings that could have actually gone to help farmers to increase productivity. So that, uh, you know, you, you, you have, if, you have, uh, you, if you are a pastoralist, you increase uh, the, 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 the amount of uh, uh, meat you can get from a cow from 70 to 110 when you can actually increase uh, you know, the pro uh, coffee productivity so that actually we go back to uh, export now, we have actually gone down. Those are the kind of priority. And you know, it's about thinking here. It's about what is a priority. And yes, somebody said here, I think it's uh, my good friend, Sylvia, and I have a lot of respect for her, that uh, we, 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 we are trying to ignore history. We have history. The problem is, do you want a history of reform over 30 years of trying to change the country through constitutional amendments, or you have a history of economic sabotage? And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah said, Siki, the political kingdom. That is a political history that they want us to address. But it's now Siki, the economic kingdom. And uh, Bill Clinton said very clearly, uh, yes. it's an economic... And let, let, let me finish by saying this, uh, yes, Mahiga, so before you intervene. <laughs> uh, Raila Odinga has since then come to agree with us. Uh, I think uh, about a week ago, or some few days ago, he actually agreed it's about the bottom of economy. And it is there well, for a very long time. We forced them to agree that until we have a conversation of the economy, we are not going to talk. But the only problem is that they plagiarized our ideas. So they had it as their second point. <laughs> in their, uh, 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 it was actually 12 point agenda. They still call it 10. They even forget the number because it was plagiarized. <laughs> So, you know, don't, 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 don't okay. give us comic relief like Wajakoya, the way you are doing it with your, with your way of saying that there is Baba and Mother. The most important thing about this country you said is finally. to address the economic history. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sylvia has the, the Azimio <laughs> Manifesto and she'll, she'll come right back after the break and uh, respond to some of the questions posed uh, in, that, in that statement by Senator Isaac Mora. You're watching Daybreak. Stay with us. I'm seeing your messages. 2242 is the SMS line. Hashtag is Daybreak. We'll be right back. It's all about the state of the nation on this fourth day of July 2022. We'll be right back.